Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm showing how to make mini reverse canvas ornaments for Christmas. I decided I'm going to make a DIY Dollar Tree ornament series on my channel. I wanted to put multiple ornaments in one video, but it was just going to be too long, so look out for other videos coming as well. I'll try to get them out as soon as possible since it's already December. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel and let's get into the tutorial. I'm going to go over to my shapes, then grab a square. I measured my mini canvas and it was around five inches wide and three inches tall. So I'm gonna use this to help me size my images. I will go up to my unlock button then I'm just going to put that sizing in here. I'll do five by three. Then I'm going to change this to a white so it's easier to see once I get the image over it. So once again, I'm not going to be cutting this rectangle out, but I'm going to be adding my images to it to figure out what size I want it to be. Now I'm going to go to my uploads. I have four mini canvases and these first four images are the ones I'm going to be using. To grab this, all I did was go to upload image and browse and I have them saved in a folder. So I'm just going to hit cancel, then I'll go back and select all four of these and insert them into Cricut Design Space. Also, all four of these are hand-drawn images. I work with somebody who draws these for my Patreon members. So if you are interested in these images, then you can check out all the info in my description box to see how to sign up. But it is just $4.99 a month and I have over 170 images. You can use these for commercial use to sell your projects or you can use them for personal use. So you can just check out all that info in my description box. These always pull in like really big in design space, so I'm gonna make them about four inches to make them smaller. Now what I'm going to do is switch up the colors. I want to add little pops of colors into each image. So I'm going to zoom in so it's a little easier to see this. I'm going to start off with this one. If you've watched my videos with the hand-drawn images for a while now, you know there is tons of layers just because it's hand-drawn. Normally with an SVG, it's only a few layers, but these hand-drawn ones have a lot. For this image, I want to make the trees a dark green, and I want the rest of the letters to be black. So what I'm going to do is go up to ungroup. Then I am just going to select the trees. An easy way to do this is go over to your layers panel and hit shift on your keyboard and select all three. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to attach these because I want them to be attached anyways. So I'll click on attach. Then I'm gonna come up to my colors and select a dark green. Now I'm gonna go down to this one. I am just gonna have the sleigh be red. So I'm going to go to ungroup again. Then I'm going to select just the sleigh and make it red. Now I'm going to go over to home for the holidays and looking at this image, I want to make this whole middle section bigger. So what I'm going to do is hit ungroup. I'm going to slide home up. It looks like the H is a separate layer. So I'll just hit shift on my keyboard, then move this up. Now what I want to do is I want to select all of these and sometimes you can just drag over everything and that can be easier. Then I am just going to make this a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to select home. I'm just going to drag over this. Then I'll just drag it back down. Now I want to change the colors of these. So the leaves, the dots, they're all separate layers. So what I'm going to do is hit shift on my keyboard again and select the leaves. It looks like everything is selected with this box here, but it's actually not. If you look in the layers panel, it is just the leaves that are selected. It can get just a little confusing with all those layers. I'm going to change the color to a lighter green. Then I'm going to go to the little dots and for me it's easier to go into the layers panel and grab all six dots. So I'll hit shift on my keyboard again. Then I'll just select on all of the dots. 
I'm going to attach it. I forgot to attach the green ones. I'll go back and do that. But I'm going to attach it because I'm going to want it to show up like that on my mat. And I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more later. But I'll go up to my color and change it to red. I'm just going to go back to my green and attach those as well. Now I'm going to go to my last image. I'll hit ungroup again. I'm going to make the bow red. Then I'm going to make the leaves green. And the top part is separate from this bottom part. So I'm going to select both of those by hitting shift on my keyboard again. Then I'll choose a light green. Now I have all the colors how I want it, and I love just those little pops of colors in each one. But now what I'm gonna do is figure out my sizing. So right now I have ungrouped everything, but for sizing that makes it hard because all of these are separate. So what I'm actually gonna do is drag over the entire image. I have it all selected and I'm going to hit group. Group is great for when you want to resize something and keep it all the same size and same dimensions. When I resize it, it'll all get resized together. Now I'm gonna bring it over my rectangle and that looks like a pretty good size. I wanna leave a little space. I might put a bow up here. I haven't completely decided yet, but I like that one. Now I'm gonna go down here, highlight over all of the layers, then I'll hit group again. My computer's going a little slow, so it's lagging a little bit. That looks good there. I'll highlight over all of these and hit group. That one looks good and now I will do the last one here. And that looks super cute. I'm going to delete this now that I'm done with my sizing. Now the last thing I need to do is I need to attach all the black colors because if I hit on make it, I'll just show you really fast. It will make it look like this. <laughs> so it will not keep it all together. So attaching it is so important. So how I'm gonna do that is I am going to ungroup this again. I already have the three green trees attached, so I'm just gonna slide them over. Then I'm gonna highlight back over all of the black part and I'll hit attach. I didn't make anything bigger or smaller because we already have this sized. Now I'm gonna come over to this. We have this grouped together, so I am going to ungroup this again. Then I'm gonna slide these pieces out. Oh, I'm gonna hit undo because it looks like I didn't attach these two pieces. I like to have it attached because it'll make it easier to line it all up. So I'm gonna hit attach. Now I'm going to attach all the black. Hopefully this is all making sense. If you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments. Now I'm going to go down to this, hit ungroup. These different colors are going to be on different mats, so when I move it out of here, you don't really have to worry about the design because it's going to cut out separately anyways. I hope I'm making sense, but I am going to highlight over all of this and hit attach. And last one, I'm going to ungroup. Then I'm gonna move these out. I already attached these. And I'm going to attach home for the holidays. Also, looking at this, these letters are so tiny that I'm afraid that it's gonna be hard to weed that. So what I'm gonna do is make that a little bit bigger also. So I'm just gonna select on that and hit detach. And I'm gonna highlight over all of these. And then I'm just going to drag it out and make it a little bit bigger. Now I'll just highlight over all this again and hit attach. I'm using my maker machine just because I always have that one kind of set up on my desk. But you can use your Explorer or your Cricut Joy as well. Now I'm going to click on make it. I'm going to move these out just a little bit. Sometimes it's easier for me to weed, weed these out when they're not so close together. I'm using iron-on vinyl, so I do want to mirror all of these designs. Then I'll click on continue. 
The setting I'm going to use is Everyday Iron-On. I am just going to select more for pressure. This kind of just depends on your blade and your machine. And I'll show you how I make this with my Cricut machine. The Cricut is starting off cutting the black vinyl first. I place all the heat transfer vinyl shiny side down and load it into the machine to cut out the designs. Now you can see that the Cricut is done cutting out the black vinyl and it's telling me that it's going to cut out the red vinyl next, so I will load that into the Cricut. I'm using Caesar Easy Weed. This is almost always my go-to for heat transfer vinyl. When the Cricut is done cutting out all the colors, I will weed out the vinyl. It's so much easier weeding out heat transfer vinyl or iron-on vinyl, but you can sometimes still lose pieces. I had a little trouble with the dots to the eyes, but you can make the dots bigger in Cricut Design Space, and I've noticed that that helps. Here's the canvases that I found at the Dollar Tree. I don't always see, see these at my Dollar Tree, so I try to look out for them and buy them when I do see them in stock. I also found little mini canvases at Hobby Lobby. You might be able to find them at Michael's too. So if you can't find them at your Dollar Tree and really want to make them, then you can try looking there. First, I use my X-Acto knife to cut around the outside edge of the staples. You can use any X-Acto knife, but the Cricut one has great quality. It's definitely one that I would recommend. The hardest part of this is cutting the corners of the frame, but once you get through that, then just pull off the canvas and you have the frame. I always just leave the staples on there because it'll be covered up once we add the canvas back on. You can stain these or use paint. I like to use baby wipes to paint onto the frame. This gives it more of a stained look and I'll just paint all four frames. Next, I'm ready to add the vinyl to my canvas. I set my Easy Press 2 to 340 at 30 seconds. I set my canvas on my Easy Press mat, then line up the design on my canvas. I place a Teflon sheet on top, then press my Easy Press 2 on top of that. You can use a Teflon sheet or parchment paper, and that just helps protect the canvas and vinyl. Since I'm going to be pressing this twice with the black and green vinyl, I only press for around half the time, just enough to make the vinyl stick down. After I finish with the black vinyl, I remove the carrier sheet, then I line up my green vinyl piece, then I press for the full time over both designs. After that's done, I remove the carrier sheet from the green trees. I'll press the next three canvases the exact same way. I like to press these separately because I've had troubles with the carrier sheets overlapping and making lines in my vinyl, so it seems to work the best this way. I ended up separating the leaves because I thought it would be easier. Then I placed the berries on top of the leaves just to help figure out where I want to line up the leaves on the canvas. Then I just take the berries off and press those separately.
Now that those are done, I'm going to add the canvas back onto the frames. I decided to use hot glue to attach the canvas. I've used staples in the past to attach these, so it's kind of up to you which one you want to use. Once I have those glued, I take scissors and cut around the edges to remove the excess canvas. You can also cut the canvas down using the measurements of the frame before adding it to the frame, which might make it a little bit easier. Once that's done, I add some Christmas twine to the top for it to hang on a tree. I used hot glue or you can use a staple as well. Once again, here's how these turned out. I just think they turned out so cute and they were really fun to make. Let me know what ornaments you are making this year. I would also love it if you subscribed if you are new to my channel and hit the bell if you don't want to miss the other Christmas DIY ornaments I will be sharing. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon account for access to these SVGs.